Let's take a look at the Reason 11 VST rack within Studio One. So I've actually already got an instance of the rack loaded on this track here. Now, if we come to the Browse and let's choose the Instruments tab, then we can see that Reason Studios has a folder. And once you install Reason 11, this is gonna show up here. You don't need to do anything but you know a separate process besides installing Reason 11. And then once I click and expand that out, we can see we have the Reason Rack plugin. And I actually have a thumbnail image that I have taken of uh, Europa to represent the Reason Rack. And I just simply drag that into the Arrange view and created this track. So this is how you can access the rack, just like any other VST. So we'll close that up and close the browser. And let's go ahead and click on the keyboard icon here to access our rack. And here we are. So what do we got going on here? We have the familiar controls within Studio One up at the top. We're just gonna cover, cover a couple of those. Uh, then below that, we have the Rack plugin and we have Undo, Redo. So any adjustments that we make to parameters or anything that we do within the Reason Rack, we can Undo, Redo here. We have Flip Rack, Hide Cables, and Settings. And we'll come back to the, these in just a moment. Below that, we have an input output panel. And if we click on this tr little triangle there, we can expand that out and we'll come back to that in a moment. Now below that, we have our devices. And this is kind of a dynamic uh, presentation of the instruments here. And this is going to update based on which are using the most. So as you use instruments more frequently, those will be populated here and you as this says, you double click to add an instrument. Now down at the bottom, we have browse instruments. And if I click on that, we open up the browser and we're taken to the instruments uh, palette here, and we can add any instrument that we have available. So I will minimize the browser and just know that we can also open here the browser by clicking on that circle. We then have add other device. So if we click on this, we can create instrument, create effect. We have our instruments here, effects, utilities, and players. And this is grayed out. Um, it, it's my understanding that we actually can't send MIDI out into Studio One to control other VSTs or uh, Studio One instruments at this time. So. Let's just go ahead and start off with the Kong, actually, because I want to take a look at routing. How, how does routing work within the rack the, as a VST? So I'm going to double click on Kong. That is then launched and we have audio from the Kong. So if I F3 to open up the mix console, we can see we have a stereo out, which uh, holds the audio for the Kong at the moment. We can see that activity here. And if I come to the flip rack, uh, tab is not going to work in the VST rack. Uh, so we need to click on the flip rack button up above here. I'll click on this triangle again to open up our input output device. And we can see that we have our main audio out going to the main out on our input output device. So we do have other outputs that are available to us. So how can we make use of those? So let's flip the rack back around and come to this bass drum one and expand out our drum and effects. And we can see by default, this is being sent to the master effects, but we wanna send that out to a separate channel. So we can click on that and then choose output three and four. Actually, I'm going to leave the bass drum on the main out. Let's come to the snare drum and let's send that out on three and four. And we will need to do further adjustments. So what we need to do, this is going to be similar as would be in reason. So we have our output three and four here and we need to click, hold and drag uh, to route those cables to three and four like so. And then now here on our input output panel, you can see we have these red LEDs or LEDs. And when these are highlighted, everything is going to be sent to the main out. So if I click on snare drum one, 
we can see that that's still going to the stereo out. Okay, so the next step that we're going to want to do is to deactivate these LEDs because we, we want to have these on separate channels. So we don't want them to go to the main. So I'm going to deactivate 3, 4, and 5, and 6. And then up above here, these are the Studio One outputs, and we need to make 3, 4, 5, and 6 active as well. So now we can see in our mixed console, we have 3, 4, 5, and 6. So at this point, when I click on the snare drum one, we can see that that's now being sent to three and four. Now, if I come to the hi-hat and let's send that out to five and six, we also need to flip the rack and do five and six to five and six, flip back around. And now we can see our hat is coming out on five and six. So bass drum one is on our main stereo out, one and two. Snare drum one is on three and four. Our hat is on five and six. And so that's how you can set up multiple outputs from the Reason Rack into Studio One. Uh, you need to be sure that these LEDs are deactivated if you want to have them on separate outputs. Otherwise, they're going to go to the main out. And then you also need to come up above here and activate the channels that you'd like to make use of. And we can go all the way up to 32. And this corresponds to the back of the rack here. You can see we have 32. Okay, so that's a basic introduction to some of the routing that you can do within the Reason Rack. And at this point, let's go ahead and remove the Kong. And in order to delete devices within the Reason Rack, you do need to right click and choose delete devices. If you press delete on your keyboard, that is not gonna work. Studio One is basically has control of the keyboard shortcuts. So you're gonna need to uh, click or use the buttons within the rack when you want to uh, take care of certain operations. So we'll right click and delete the Kong out. And I'm gonna actually reactivate these and send them back out to the main and close that panel down. Now we could also, if we've made some adjustments, we could store that as a preset up above here. We can even export that VST3 preset, export preset. And then let's move on to say the Europa here, Europa. Um, so I'm gonna double click that opens up, I'll press caps lock to bring up my QWERTY keyboard control for the MIDI. I don't actually have a MIDI controller connected at the moment, so we now have Europa running audio into Studio One. And just let's bring in grain. And again, we need to come to, we need to right click and choose delete device. I'll double click on the grain and our QWERTY keyboard is still up. So so this is all pretty straightforward. We're just, um, double clicking to choose the instrument that we'd like to use. And we have immediate access to the audio. Let's go ahead and run this to check out the Dr. Octo Rex. Okay, I'll stop the run and let me flip, flip the rack around because I believe this does have multiple outputs. So this is another instance where if we expand the input output panel, we can take the slice outputs and route these to separate outputs as well if we'd like. So there, there's some routing flexibility here. And while you do have to go through a few steps, I think this is a hell of a lot better than using the rewire, which can be pretty convoluted and tedious to set up. 
So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the implementation of the audio routing within the Reason 11 VST rack. So let's go ahead and close up that panel, flip the rack around, and I'm going to right click and delete this device out. So let's move on now to taking a look at effects. How can we work with the effects within the Reason rack? Let me close it down for a moment and let's clean up some things here. I will close the mix panel and I'll press F3 to open. Actually, I want F6 to open up the browser and let's bring in the Mai Tai. I'll drag that to the range view and we've got a track created. And let's come up to the patches. I'm gonna choose a lead. Let's bring up the on-screen keys. Okay, we've got a lead on our Mai Tai, and what if we'd like to use an, a reason effect for this? Let's afford to open up the inspector. I'll come to the inserts now. We could also, we can just click here, and we see Reason Studios. Here is our Reason Rack plugin effect. So we could click on that. We can also, I'll close out the inspector by pressing F4. If we, let's see, F3 to open up the mix console. This is part of the uh, problem with working with such a small screen. Um, so we can also come here to our inserts. Here is the Reason Rack plugin effect. So let's, and this is gonna, you can see that the uh, interface here has already changed to show us some effects. We have the new Quartet Course Ensemble, our sweeper modulation effect. We've got pulsar Pulverizer, the Echo, Scream. A lot of people are fans of the Scream. So maybe we'll work with this. We have the uh, RV7000, the new Channel Dynamics, Channel EQ, the CF101. So let's, let's actually take a look at one of the new devices, the Quartet Course Ensemble. I'll double click on that. So at this point, we still have our on-screen keys uh, up, so we immediately have the effect applied to our Mai Tai. And at this point, I'm just gonna close this down just to clear things up a little bit. Let me close the browser as well as the mix console. Okay, so. We've got course. feedback FFT we can adjust our frequency range and we have grain And as with the uh, instruments within the Reason Rack, we do need to right click and delete the device out to remove that. Let's try out the sweeper modulation effect. Adjusting the frequency here. We've got a flanger. and a filter and we can choose the type here we have a variety of filters to choose from we've got spread volume dry wet uh, a lot of different controls here and maybe i'll do a tutorial that goes into depth on these new effect devices within reason but just know that you can access them in this way and we can even come to the add device let's add another effect here maybe the scream four
Actually, I want to add the uh, RV 7000 to this. Let me. I want that film score. Take that down a bit. I'm going to change this back to the phaser. I like that actually. Okay, so you can see we are, we've got an effects chain set up here and you can just keep on adding. Um, if you are someone who is noticing my performance here, the CPU performance, this is kind of high here, but just keep in mind that um, I've said it many times before, I'm still on a $300 computer. Uh, that's a 2.1 gigahertz processor, four gigs of RAM. It's, it's, it's nothing. So um, I think you're going to have better performance than I do. This thing is five years old. I'm going to try to get a new computer in the next uh, month or so. Uh, so hopefully I can get that done because it's definitely time. Now, as with the instruments, we can come up to this little page icon here and store a preset and use that on other instruments if we'd like. And um, I think that we're probably going to wrap up here. There's some construction going out on the street, and it's uh, I don't know how much that's making it into the mic. All right, and so this has been a brief overview of working with the Reason 11 Rack within Studio One. And I think we'll just go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, just know that we do have some other capabilities here, like side chaining. We can see we have that here, and we can set that up along uh, with using the controls up above. We have settings here. If we click on that, we can access various settings for the Reason Rack. I'll just click OK and close that out. So look out for more tutorials where I'm going to be covering the new features in a Reason 11 and the Rack, and we will wrap up here. Thanks for watching.